Okay, well here goes an attempt at uh, trying to show my way of covering a wing with monocoat. Just like to mention that this is not the only way. Everyone has their own techniques, but uh, this is the way it works for me, and I'm by no means any expert at covering, so I'll try to give it my uh, my best shot here. So you can see this is the air tractor wing, what is it, the left wing. I'm going to make an attempt at covering the top here in green. It's going to be green from here back, yellow strip that wraps around with a black pin stripe down the length. Um, you can see here in the in the shots, yeah, right in here, I had quite a um, a bit of rippling going on in the sheeting, and then down here on this end too, it was quite wavy. So it's taking me a couple nights just putting a little bit of filler on at a time to get all that nice and smooth. I've also gone over it with my tack cloth just to take any dust off and that sanded down to 600 grit with um, hairspray. Usually then too, I just rub my hands over it because even though the tack cloth has been on it, you can still feel the odd little pebble or speck. Feels good. Okay. It's a little bit like one of those cooking programs. I've already uh, pre-cut my sheet of green here. And I've heard it said before by some pros that when it comes to covering, you never try to skimp on saving the last little bit of covering, leave lots of material overhanging on all ends. If it costs an extra roll or two on the cost of these planes, big deal. Okay, so I'm just uh, laying out my sheeting here. What I'll do is, uh, this is my iron here. It's a, the top flight monocoat iron. Um, this is the sock that I like to use and it's a Century 21 sock. Cover a 21st century cover sock. That's the favorite, uh, my favorite. And as you can see though, what happens with them is you do tend to get a little bit of a tear there all the time. But uh, this one, I'm just going to do a couple passes. I'm going to change it out and put on uh, the new sock. Because if you don't have the right sock on, it'll kind of do some gouges. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start in the middle, I'm going to make a little tiny strip this way, then I'm going to go down the length. I like to do it right kind of where the main spar is, almost center, and then I will then work my way down this way, and then I'll flip the wing and work my way back over this way. What I also like to find is once I get my strip laid down, and I work this way, I tend to put pressure right here on the on the uh, the ball of the sock and this part here is above the monocoat and it kind of just does some heat treating of the monocoat so that as I go by this part here then pushes down okay so I'll get myself set up and start to uh, start to do the application okay I'm all set up here what I've done so far is there's a section from here down to here that has been to basically ironed down. My iron, by the way, is set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, every monocoat is a little bit different, but for the ones that aren't too, too dark, 350 seems about right for at least how I like to apply it. Um, so what I've done is I've started here and I've worked my way back this way, always using the heel as my, my lead. Um, to preheat the uh, the monocoat and then the ball of the iron is what uh, pushes it down. So I've gone that way. I'm now going to go this other way here. Try to get over this 
way because I'm right handed. Try and left handed this time. Left handed isn't working very good. got a piece now that's tacked all the way down here. What I'll do now is this is where I start to do a little bit of pulling. So I grab here with my hand and I basically take this, I let the heel of the iron do the pre-treating. What you'll find is it almost creates a bit of a wave as, as you're pushing it down. At least this is how I find it. Um, and what you're almost doing is you're, you're watching the reflection and you're basically almost like squeegeeing out any air. If there's any kind of a bubble that forms underneath, not good. Because that bubble in the heat, in the sun, will definitely cause problems later. So this is all I'm doing. So I'm basically going down, what, about two inches here? If you keep the iron on too long, it'll cause some pretty crazy shrinkage, pretty crazy damage. Especially on a foam wing, not so bad on these built up wings, but, but uh, well, it's coming. It's just a slow process. Nothing fast about this, about this mono coating. Again, I am pulling fairly hard too with my hand. Um, trying to keep the poles completely vertical. If you start pulling it this way, by the time you get to the end here, you'll have a big huge wrinkle that you have to try to shrink out with the iron. Again, I don't use any heat gun. Pretty much the only thing I use my heat gun for now is for heat shrink tubing. So far, so good. I'm sure this is a boring video, so I'll turn it off and show some progress a little bit later. Okay, so what I've done so far now is I've worked my way, I've done about a two inch strip, and then I did another two inch strip working my way down. So basically this section here now is, is all covered. I'm now basically working my way this way and trying to get all this down. So I'll just do a couple uh, inches here just to show. Basically what I'm doing is I can't reach under and grab it so I just kind of moisten my, my fingers a little bit and I'm able to still pull the cover in while I go. Pressure is about the equivalent of another weight of the iron, so not very much pressure at all. And I'm really watching the reflection here to make sure that I'm basically squeegeeing out all the bubbles and the whole time the heel is kind of pre-shrinking, pre-heat treating the, the monocoat. Nothing fast about this. It's all just patience. Hence why I said the monotony of monocoating. Make sure it's really well stuck down on the edges. There'll be an overlap the other way on this seam, but. The only good thing with 
monocoating or the fumes. Just love the smell. I'll probably find out in a few years that it was not good for me, but such is life. So you see I'm just kind of using the ball here of the iron to do the pushing. And it's surprising what the heel does a couple uh, millimeters off the uh, the covering. You can you can even shrink it kind of. You can see it shrinking. It almost kind of creates a little bit of a wave for the ball to push things down. There's progress. I'll shut things off. I'm gonna lose everyone. Back to the world's most exciting video ever. I've now got basically from the main spire forward. That is all ironed down. Turned out pretty decent. Now what I'll do again is I'll start in the middle and I basically pull the covering tight and no different, basically work my way back this way. Just like that. And I'll continue to pull the covering and, and work my way. Slowly but surely, do about maybe two inch strips. Let the heel of the iron do all the pre-treating. The ball of the iron, I guess, or the main part of the iron, I just let it do all the sticking. I just sit here and breathe the fumes. Oh. Okay, so again, I started from the middle. I worked my way about a three inch stretch here, pulling it down and ironing it. And then I started from here again, knowing that I didn't create any kind of uh, stretchingness. Uh, I didn't create any stretch marks. So what I did then is I went down again here and I basically finished up the last three inches, um, basically to, to get us this whole section now is done with the weight. So basically I now have a section from here down and I'll just continue to do the same thing. I'll do a three inch uh, strip, make sure that I didn't distort the covering any, hopefully not, and then I'll work my way down. I'll do another three inch strip to finish this off and then the last little overhang piece here, I will then do that. So pretty straightforward, just takes time. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in here. I'm basically on the last stretch and I just wanted to see if I could show by zooming in here how the iron is shrinking everything. all up very right close to the edge. Make sure there's no bubbles. So it doesn't take that long. To do this big section of green here, I guess so far I've spent about maybe 15-20 minutes on it. stretch down here and work my way over.
There we go. So that's basically the covered green section. Now what I'll do is I'll just take my iron, take the sock off, and with a little bit of pulling like this, and my iron right over here, I'll be able to wrap this around really nice and sharp around all the edges without having to do any of those slits. And same right here, I'll just do one slit like this, wrap this, fold it around, cut it off, and then wrap this one down as well. I have to do the corner piece as well here. I did. Anyways, a little bit of work, but the the big part is done. Probably about 20 minutes of panel. Okay, I got the green all done. I have it all edged, wrapped around, around the sides. We're ready to go for the yellow now. So what I have is, if you look really closely, you can't see it in the in the picture, but I have about a 1 16th overlap. I don't want too much of an overlap because I'm still going to put a black stripe down it. So again, same thing, I'm going to just start in the middle. I'm going to get this set here and then I'm basically going to stretch it so that it becomes straight. And I'm going to tack it. This isn't a real deep iron, it's just a tack. I'll iron it down in a few minutes. Okay, push that way. Luckily it's curved here on the surface, so I can get away with doing this. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just take this to the edge and I'll work from the center and go up, getting any air bubbles out of it. Again, I have it set at around 350 for the yellow. Not quite so critical here because there's that black stripe going on. I'd be doing it a lot slower and a lot more detailed if the black stripe wasn't meant to go on. Okay, a lot of people ask me um, how I cut the one covering over top of the other. Um, I always go extra length so I can pull on something and then I then trim it off to the right length uh, later. So it's all kind of feel. Um, what I found is one brand new razor blade will probably be able to cut this one length once. After that you've got to replace the razor blade. It's funny how quick they go. Um, I have this um, it's Veritas Power Tool Guide. I get it from, uh, I got it from Lee Valley. Um, and it's great because it's a hundred inch straight edge and so basically what I do is I just set up my guide and just it's all about the pressure um, I just get to feel the covering 
and I just cut through the yellow, but not the green. I'll just tear it out, or tear it off, and I'll be done. Okay, there it is cut. So I'll now flip it over. Got my got my yellow and green. Ooh, sun's uh, pretty bright. Yellow and green. I'm now going to finish off the wing tip on the outside and then basically put the black stripe in. <laughs> 